Dear students, in the earlier class we have discussed uh, how the constituent assembly was constituted and uh, making of Indian constitution. In this class uh, we will discuss the role of uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in making uh, Indian constitution. What is his role? So, we know that on August 29th, 1947 uh, that uh, constituent assembly set up a drafting committee. It was headed by Dr. Ambedkar. The main task uh, was to prepare the draft constitution. Uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, worked more than 18 hours per day in uh, looking into the various aspects of a drafting committee that pros and cons of uh, each issues in detail. Being a great uh, constitution expert, social reformer and a great humanist, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, contributed uh, very much to the Indian constitution and as well as to the Indian society. So, he thought that uh, it is not enough to educate uh, himself, the whole uh, society should be enlightened and educated and as well as entire the Dalit committee must be educated and come forward. So, one time he gone to the extent that declaring that uh, uh, the Dalit should become the rulers of India because he thought that uh, uh, what is the what was the situation of the Dalit in those days. Once they become a ruler of the country, uh, their position, their conditions will be reformed. Hence, uh, he come to the conclusion or uh, uh, presumption that to declare uh, the Dalit should become a ruler of the country. And he fought against the caste leaden society, that means a casteless society uh, very tirelessly till the end. He contributed very much to the development of the country. So, for making Indian constitution, uh, the contribution of Dr. Rambedkar is uh, voluminous. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to say in few words. Uh, here I am talking or uh, I will explain only the very much important contributions what had been made by the uh, Dr. B. D. B. R. Ambedkar. First of all, uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, worked as a chairman of the drafting committee of Indian constitution. He involved wholeheartedly and uh, magnificently in preparing the various provisions of the Indian constitution. He declared that India is a union of state and he advocated for uh, unity in uh, diversity. He was in favor of uh, establishing a strong central government uh, and uh, it can be treated as the best contribution of the B. R. Ambedkar. So, today we are having a uh, federal system in that uh, uh, actually in federal system the central government is weak, state government is a uh, very strong actually. But uh, in our Indian system, uh, what the contribution, uh, beautiful contribution of B. R. Ambedkar, he made central government is the very strong uh, and uh, state government uh, working under the direction of the central government. That is called uh, unity in diversity. Secondly, a very much useful contribution is the incorporation of Article 14 to the Indian Constitution. That means uh, all are equal before the law and uh, in the uh, all are equal before law and equal opportunity under equal circumstances shall be practiced and followed. That means equal opportunity provided to all and there shall not be any delay uh, on the basis of uh, uh, sex or place of birth or uh, race or uh, the any kind of any other or individually or commonly there cannot be any kind of discrimination made against the person. So, that means all are equal before the law and uh, equal protection should be given to all. The thirdly, uh, due to personal experience of uh, being ill treated by some Hindu caste, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar inserted article 17 to the Indian constitution. That is we know that uh, that is abolition of uh, untouchability. That means uh, 
accordingly preaching or practicing in human practice of untouchability has been made a cognizable offense and no one should be degraded defaced based upon his birth everyone should be allowed to uh, lead a respectful and peaceful life once uh, we continued the practice of untouchability there is no question of giving a respect to other that means uh, dr b r ambedkar completely they put a prohibition or completely banned the practice of untouchability by inserting the article 17 to the indian constitution that is his uh, great contribution to the indian constitution he advocated for the establishment of a socialistic pattern of the society that means where resources of a nation shall be shared by commonly all then uh, he advocated against uh, the forced labor that means uh, uh, no one should be forced uh, by misusing uh, their helpless uh, conditions uh, uh, this is his contributions that means uh, uh, he opposed the misuse of women and children for immoral or unethical uses or practices it reflects the moral standard of uh, ambedkar that is under article 23 and 24 of indian constitution uh, no one should be exploited uh, by their by by the uh, by their uh, uh, weaker positions uh, being a child it should not be exploited being a woman she should not be ex exploited because of their uh, uh, vulnerable situations so it is also the great uh, contributions of b r ambedkar for the weaker sections of the society dr b r ambedkar made the constitution uh, totally secular uh, articles 25 to 28 are the proof of it religious freedom is accorded accorded to each and every one in the country every religion is treated equally uh, state doesn't discriminate between one or bit visa visa that of the other religion to put it in nutshell there is no state religion in india that means a state should not recognize any religion as its own in the with regard to the religion or with reference to the religion state is neutral and uh, it gave protection to all the religions and it treated all the religions are uh, equally insertion of articles 29 and 30 for the interest of a minorities can be said to be the another contribution of uh, dr b r ambedkar he was the strong opinion that both majority and minority should respect to each other and they should uh, unitedly work for the development and progress of the nation that's why he article 20 and 30 protected the minorities rights because uh, uh, where the majorities are there normally minorities will be depressed so in order to protect their interest article 20 and 30 were inserted in the constitution itself then uh, dr b r ambedkar advocated for uh, social justice in the form of reservation uh, to the de depressed class in the society a uh, reservation for uh, scheduled caste scheduled tribes and backward classes etc are very necessary dr b r ambedkar advocated uh, for the india should be maintain friendly relations with the other countries of the world especially uh, with our uh, immediate neighboring countries like sri lanka malaysia indonesia bangladesh pakistan etc then uh, i will come to the criticism against the constituent assembly some of the criticism are made or level against the uh, constituent assembly the first and the foremost criticism was that the congress dominion that means constituent assembly was nothing but a the dominion of the congress so we know that assembly was dominated by one party that is congress uh, in the beginning the congress had a built in majority that is uh, 69% uh, later which was jumped into 82% 
after partition that is india into uh, india and pakistan it was criticized that uh, constituent assembly was dominated by a congress party or single party the next criticism was was it a sovereign assembly whether this uh, constituent assembly was a sovereign assembly or a sovereign uh, body it was the question uh, proposed against this uh, constituent assembly uh, because uh, this constituent assembly according to the uh, uh, criticizers this constituent assembly was not a sovereign body it was created uh, by the proposals of uh, british government Further, Constituent Assembly conducted its uh, sessions and uh, meetings with the permission of the British government before independence. So that is why normally the question arises or uh, put it in other words a criticism made uh, it was not a sovereign body at all. The next criticism uh, made against this uh, Constituent Assembly was uh, it was Hindu dominated uh, body. This Constituent Assembly was Hindu dominated uh, body and it is the most unrepresentative body ever created in the democratic uh, country of the world. Uh, British leaders like Churchill and uh, Lord Simon named it as a Hindu body because it representing the interest of only the Hindus. It is an unrepresentative body uh, because uh, it is not uh, based on the universal adult uh, franchise uh, it created. It is indirectly elected uh, and as well as it was created by indirect election by and by nomination. Uh, that is why it was uh, criticized that uh, it is only represented the Hindus. It is not a representative body. The next criticism uh, made against the constituent assembly was that it was dominated by the legal uh, luminaries. Accordingly, uh, some critics, uh, the constituent assembly of India is a lawyer's paradise. Uh, the fact remains that the constituent assembly was guided and directed by the top leaders of the Congress, stalwarts like uh, Nehru, Patel, Ajad. Uh, uh, Prasad Munsi dominated the scene. Although indirectly elected constituent assembly was highly representative body that means they have given uh, uh, representation to the all religions except Muslims uh, because uh, uh, Muslims were uh, constituted and they were become the members of a uh, constituent assembly but when uh, later uh, India were uh, divided into India and Pakistan their membership was automatically ceased. Uh, that is why uh, the Muslims representation was not there in the constituent assembly. So, except Muslims for all religions they have given representation. The next uh, concept is uh, preamble of the Indian constitution. Every constitution must begin with its own preamble. Such a preamble is nothing but an introduction to the constitution. It explains the sources of the constitution, objectives and goals of the constitution. It also explains date on which it came into existence. Actually pre preamble reflect the basic structure and the spirit of the constitution and it represent the entire constitution in the written words. Preamble of the Indian constitution uh, should be appreciated as one of the best preamble in the world. We can't move to the court of law if uh, some of the objective of the preamble got me implemented or achieved therefore it is said to be a non-justiciable. It is just introduction, it is not the body of the constitution. It goes with the declaration of the objectives and goals of the constitutions. Following is the preamble of the Indian constitution. I shall read now uh, how the preamble start and ends. See here, we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into sovereign, democratic, socialistic, secular republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social economic political, liberty of thought, 
expression, belief, faith and worship. Equality of status and opportunity. And to promote uh, among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. In our constituent assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adapt, enact and to give ourselves to this constitution. In this way, we adapted our constitution for ourselves. So, entire the constitution, uh, what it says, it expressed in the preamble in these few words. So, I am already told you, so one of the best preamble in the world is the Indian uh, constitution preamble because it explains everything uh, which is the goal and objectives and source of the constitution. It describes India as a sovereign, socialistic, secular, democratic republic and it underlines the national objectives like uh, justice that is social, economic, uh, political as well as fraternity. It emphasizes the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. It declares that in India people are sovereign. So, we the sovereign. So, that means that uh, preamble highlights the type of society we have. It serves as a channelizing tool for the interpretation of a constitution. I will uh, for this uh, regarding this uh, statement I will come to later. The word uh, socialist and secular uh, were inserted by 42nd amendment to the constitution. Uh, earlier it was not there. Uh, socialistic and secular uh, later on uh, that is in 1976 by 42nd amendment uh, these two words are inserted. We should note that uh, significance of the preamble. Uh, India became an independent country therefore today it is sovereign that means India is a sovereign uh, both internally and uh, externally. It should not means we should not be surrendered to uh, anyone. That means India is a sovereign, it is not under any control. In a democratic country, adult franchise has been uh, practiced. Right from the beginning, uh, we are also practiced the adult franchise. Accordingly, uh, anyone who completes the 18 years of age is allowed to vote irrespective of his religion, caste, or uh, sex or economic or any kind of a status. India has a representative form of a democracy that means it representatives of the people form the government and exercise the powers. We have the representative form of the uh, government. So, every uh, once in five years we send our representative to form a government. So, we know that government is the permanent, but political parties are come and go. Every 5 years, once in 5 years, uh, which political party gains the majority in election, uh, they constituted or form the government. The next one is socialistic, secular, democratic uh, republic. What does it mean? Uh, Socialist uh, system refers to the resources of the nation shall be shared by all commonly. Uh, ownership and management of all the means of production will be in the hands of the society. That means all uh, uh, natural and as well as uh, any kind of a resources uh, should be shared by uh, all commonly. Even though we are having a uh, big gap between the richer and poor, but uh, our uh, societal uh, nowadays uh, system like that uh, richer become a uh, richer and poor become very poor. Even though uh, government uh, had made uh, the, the many functions uh, to achieve the welfare society and uh, to uh, remove this gap between the richer and poor. 
socialistic pattern society does not to mean that uh, uh, centralization or nationalization of every resources uh, of an, uh, every individuals uh, and uh, giving common to all. Uh, that means uh, it give a, uh, some welfare programs uh, to the uh, vulnerable sections of the society. It uh, try to bring up them to the richer level or bring them to the uh, mainstream of the society. Uh, India is a socialistic country. Uh, that means uh, yeah, by 42nd amendment uh, the word socialist is allowed. That means religious freedom is allowed uh, and practiced in India. We do not have any state religion. In India state is neither religious nor anti-religious. It encourages every religion. And anyone can uh, preach or practice uh, his religion, but uh, uh, he can't impose uh, it on the others. So, uh, today you can uh, practice or preach uh, Hindu religion or uh, tomorrow if you want to uh, practice or preach the uh, Mohammedan religion, you can de do that because it is a fundamental right under Indian constitution. You can, uh, so it does not uh, uh, prescribe uh, one should uh, he, by being a Hindu, he should uh, practice Hindu religion or Hindu religion. He can at any point of time, it is his choice, uh, he can practice and uh, preach uh, any religion of his or her choice. Then uh, democratic uh, republic uh, country. Word democratic republic refers to the fact that ultimate power was to the people in the country. Democracy means ultimately who are the sovereign, people are the sovereign. Once in five years, citizens send their elected representative, govern the uh, people or form the government. Republic refers to the fact that head of the state shall be elected either this election may be direct or indirect. Accordingly, the Indian president has been elected by the electoral college. The electoral college consists of a representative for both the houses of a parliament that is uh, Rajya Sabha and uh, Lok Sabha and uh, elected MLAs of each state and union territories because uh, direct election is very difficult to conduct uh, for the uh, president election uh, as such uh, the Indian president uh, he was elected uh, uh, person he is elected uh, once in five years by way of indirect election. So, in nutshell we can say that even though India was declared as a free country in 1947, it was still a constitutional monarchy under British government because till June 21st 1948, Lord Mountbatten was the governor general India and India had no democracy or constitution in its place. Chakravarti Rajagopalachari was the first and last Indian governor general even after independence that is until 1950. So, we looking to this aspect uh, what we can uh, say that even after independence uh, actually we got independence in 1947 but uh, 1950 January 26th actually we have uh, we are independent uh, nation because until that uh, the one uh, government uh, enactment which uh, we have used for the demonstration of our country or administration of a country that is government of India Act 1935. Hence uh, our nation truly became a republic only after the constitution came into effect. That means, this marked the birth of Indian Republic. When the, we have a Republic uh, form of a government means actually from 19, uh, since 1950, January 26th, uh, we had a, a Republic form of government. Dr. Rajendra Prasad assumed the presidency of the first president of India. It shows the significant change from being a loyal to the British king to having our own Indian leader. Earlier we had that is a Mount Batten was the governor general even though Indian Chakravarti Rajagopalachari was also we are called the 
him as a, the governor general of india but uh, after constitution came into force uh, dr rajendra prasad uh, assumed the presidency power as the first president of india the next uh, we will come to the concept that is a goals of indian uh, constitution what are the goals of indian constitution justice liberty equality fraternity are the goals of indian constitutions we are therefore bound to understand the meaning of each and uh, above concepts and their importance in our uh, uh, constitutional setup uh, justice means general welfare of the society no one should be deprived of uh, his or her due equal opportunity and under equal circumstances shall be allowed free legal aid to the marginal sections of the society because uh, justice delayed should be a denial of a justice reservation for the scheduled caste scheduled tribes and backward classes uh, are you are in tune with the social justice in india next one is uh, liberty every citizen of india is a freedom of speech and expression and uh, freedom of uh, religious freedom liberty refers to creating conditions uh, necessary for the all round development of uh, personality of citizens in the country no doubt social progress of a society is certainly depends upon the individual uh, progress and prosperity article 19 of indian constitution speaks uh, about uh, freedom of individuals that means freedom of speech freedom of expression freedom of assembly freedom of association freedom to move freely and to settle down uh, uh, in any part of the country and freedom of profession all citizens have the right to carry on any trade uh, or profession occupation uh, provided trade or occupation must be a legal that means uh, liberty of uh, it is also one of the goal under the indian constitution what are the liberties must be extended to the citizens and as well as the persons then uh, equality and uh, fraternity equality refers to the equality of an opportunity under equal circumstances for both men and women it refers to equal uh, protection of uh, law also liberty and equality are said to be the two faces of the same coin uh, one carries no meaning in the absence of the other that means in order to achieve the equality liberty must be there in order to achieve the liberty equality must be there we cannot achieve one separately or independently by the other equality can't be maintained among the unequal we know that uh, what is the use of giving a liberty to the individual when there is no equality at all uh, they are complementary to each other uh, aim in maintaining the integrity and uh, strength of the country along with the individual dignity the main aim of the fraternity is maintaining the integrity and strength of the country along with the individual uh, dignity every citizen of india should act uh, together with the spirit of brotherhood so uh, we are the citizen of india uh, we are having a brotherhood with the brotherhood spirit we are having a integrity and towards uh, integrity and unity of india it is necessary to ensure the dignity and decorum of individual if there is no brotherhood concept or if there is no brotherhood feeling it is not possible to give the maintain the dignity of the individual suppose we practice the untouchability there is no question of maintaining the dignity of the individual there is no question of maintaining the brotherhood that's why the untouchability was uh, abolished under the article 17 of indian uh, constitution it is said in uh, dispensable to maintaining the unity and integrity of india the declaration of the human rights by uno emphasizes the same idea of a fraternity among all citizens of the world it is very much needed in india and uh, elsewhere also that means unity and integrity is very much for every citizens uh, 
for the development of the nation either he is the citizen of india or he is the citizen of america or he is the citizen of uk uh, with re with respect to their nations uh, uh, one must have an unity and integrity towards the nation uh, preamble of indian constitution uh, with the above legal moral and ethical principles uh, naturally appreciated as one of the best preamble in the world so some of the cases uh, we can know that uh, in uh, re beriberi case uh, it was the first case court held that uh, preamble was not a part of indian uh, constitution because it is not and come under the uh, any of the articles of indian constitution uh, so it is a, it is not a part of indian constitution uh, the court decided that but later on in keshwananda bharati case uh, court held that preamble to be a part of the constitution the constitution must be read along with the uh, preamble that means if any of the articles are having any ambiguity in that circumstances uh, we can take uh, help from the preamble or we should read that uh, ambiguity uh, section article along with the preamble then then you get a clear meaning in that sense court held that uh, preamble is a integral part of indian constitution uh, then uh, sr bammai case same thing uh, they said that preamble of the constitution is an integral part of the constitution then uh, indira gandhi versus uh, rajnaran case court held that preamble to the indian constitution guarantees uh, equality of status and of an opportunity and rule of law these are all the basic uh, structure of the constitution as such uh, preamble is a part and parcel of indian constitution later on in indira sawani case uh, court held that preamble to the constitution emphasizes the principle of equality so we know that equality is the basic structure of the constitution as such preamble is the part and parcel of indian constitution finally in ir kohera law versus state of tamil nadu case supreme court uh, held it uh, alter in any way the original preamble of the constitution is a violation of the basic structure of the constitution that means uh, uh, preamble is also a basic structure of the constitution as such uh, it should not it, it is a integral part of the indian constitution uh, even though it is not under any of the articles uh, preamble uh, is a part and parcel of a indian uh, next class uh, we will move on to the next uh, unit uh, that is uh, unit third uh, thank you for uh, patient uh, listening uh, uh, regarding these uh, indian constituent uh, how the constituent assembly was constituted and uh, how they are worked magnificently for making indian constitution especially what was the contribution of uh, dr p r ambedkar in making indian constitution and finally the what is the significance of the preamble in indian constitution uh, thank you students next class we will move on to the next unit